Kuzuzambo, I'm Poop Kim. Welcome to Bhutan This Week, our weekly news magazine program. Let's take a look at our top stories this week. His Majesty the King conferred Dhaka to the Prime Minister, Ministers, Speaker and the Opposition Leader. Bhutan drops 6 places to 81st in the 2019 Ease of Doing Business Rankings. And Transport United FC wins the BOB National League for the second consecutive year. His Majesty the King conferred Dhaka to the Prime Minister, 10 cabinet ministers of the newly elected government and the opposition leader on Wednesday. Headed by the Prime Minister, there are three ministers each from the East, South and West and one from Central. Receiving Dakin from His Majesty the King today, Dr. Lotus Ring is officially sworn in as the Prime Minister of the newly elected government. Dr. Lote was heading His Majesty's Kidu Medical Unit since 2014. Issuing a kasho, His Majesty the King appointed Dr. Lotus Ring as the Prime Minister on the 29th of last month. His Majesty the King also granted orange scarf to the Prime Minister and the Cabinet Ministers. Among the cabinet ministers, 63-year-old Sherab Galson from Mongar is now Home and Cultural Affairs Minister. Sherab Galson served as the secretary of the Zonka Development Commission. The founding member of the Dugnyam Ripsokpa, Dr. Tanji Doji from Limukot Tewong, is the foreign minister. He was a consultant pediatrician, a public health researcher and a technical advisor prior to becoming a politician. A former parliamentarian, Karma Donen Wangdi from Galifu, is the Information and Communications Minister. He served as a Member of Parliament in the National Council from 2008 till 2013. The Education Minister is J.B. Rai from Pinsuling in Chuka. He was a CEO and a Chief Consultant to a private company before he became a politician. Deshun Wangmu, the lone female Minister in the Cabinet, will look after the Health Ministry. She was an independent consultant in public health and social development. Yeshe Penjo from Nubitan Sibji in Tongsa is the Agriculture and Forest Minister. He was the project director of the Green Public Procurement Project. The Works and Human Settlement Minister is Doji Singh from Radhi Sakting in Tashigang. He worked as an executive engineer with the same ministry. A former community service worker, Loknath Sharma from Dupuchen Tading in Samsi, is the Economic Affairs Minister. He also worked with the Road Safety and Transport Authority for 10 years. Namge Sring from Doga Shaba in Paro is the Finance Minister. He resigned as a Program Manager with the Health Ministry to become a politician. He had also served as Project Coordinator in World Bank and Global Fund Project. And the youngest among them all, Ugen Doji from Timshing Kangpara, is sworn in as the Labor and Human Resources Minister. He was Desk Officer with Foreign Ministry. His Majesty also granted orange company to the Speaker Wang Chunamge and to the Opposition Leader Dr. Pema Jamso. While the Speaker and the Opposition Leader are not accorded orange company by the Constitution, His Majesty may award such companies in the exercise of His Majesty's royal prerogatives. Led by the Prime Minister, the Cabinet Ministers and the Speaker took oath of allegiance at the Cabinet Hall. Pub Game for BBS News. This event marks the beginning of a new government. Prime Minister Dr. Lotus Sring and his cabinet will now officially take charge of the state affairs. In a press conference, he said he plans to work closely with the other three parties. In the Chubi in the job gele, Nanyam Rutsoba Nele Tundi, the Dujuni Sessionubi, Nyam Rutsoba Giju Menla, and Meningagi, Che Media Karalu, as far as possible, DNT government semi-goodi. They use Bemana session way. Royal Government of Bhutani session way. Nila Pata Lungagi Nankinalo Yamru Tobagi, two show watching Machi Dubi Misakar, two show session way. Yamru Tobagi Dubi Legimit Machin, Machi Gahablu Pain session way. Anybody to Nachara Kara, Nabukara, Dubi Misachi, so watching Dujun Japsuchi, the Karichana session way. As winter sets in, people of Chuzagang Gaok in Sarpang resort to their usual practice of constructing a temporary bridge over Mao River. 
Despite having a public transport service, people prefer walking to Gullifoot town, taking the old route as it saves time and cost. But with the new government promising a bridge over the Mau River, the problem is likely to get solved and people are already excited. Public transport is essential during summer for people living across the river. But in winter, when the river water level drops, they construct a temporary bridge. Recently, over a hundred people gathered at Mau River to construct the bridge. They said this tradition is soon going to end, going by the promise of the new government. They were all smiles with the government promising a new bridge. <laughs> On the other hand, for the public service transport provider, winter is a dry season. They said people use the service only if they have heavy loads to take home. Chuzangang Geok administration initiates the construction of a temporary bridge with labor contribution from locals every winter and uses it till the beginning of summer. There are four Geoks across Mao River with a population of at least 11,000. For Kamuangdi in Gelifu, this is Ringdandu for BBS News. Protection of minority investors and resolving insolvency still remains a huge challenge in the country as Bhutan dropped six places to 81st in the 2019 Ease of Doing Business rankings. The World Bank compiles the report by comparing business regulation for domestic firms in 190 countries. Bhutan's ranking has been sleeping for the third year in a row. The World Bank looks at how easy it is to start a business, to get credit, pay taxes and import and export procedures. Likewise, there are six other parameters with which the rankings are assessed. Among the 10 parameters, Bhutan ranks the best in paying taxes, 15th among the 190 countries. The report states the introduction of online tax filing system, RAMIS, has made paying taxes easier. Protection of minority investors has affected Bhutan's overall ranking severely. Minority investors are the ones who hold less than 50% of the shares and have no voting rights in a company. Bhutan ranks 125 in this parameter with a score of 46.67 out of 100. Bhutan ranked 28 among 190 countries in trading across the border parameter. Bhutan's highest parameter score was recorded in this parameter with 94.25 points out of 100. This means import and export regulations and procedures are easier for Bhutanese businesses. While importing and exporting are easy, getting credit is not a straightforward task for Bhutanese businesses. Bhutan is ranked 85th in the ease of getting credit. On the other hand, dealing with construction permits parameter also ranked a lowly 88. The report states construction permits take more than five months to get finalized. While ranks of 28 among 190 countries in enforcing contracts parameter and 54 for registering property parameter reflects well for the Bhutanese business environment, it takes 61 days just to get electricity for a business in the country. Sherab Doji, BBS News. 
Bhutan's first economic census will be conducted next month. The census will record all business establishments operating within Bhutan. It will be conducted for a period of two months involving over 50 enumerators. The economic census will serve as an official assessment of the nation's economy. The economic census will help create an enabling environment for private sector development. The census will provide policymakers with evidence-based information for formulation of better policies. The report would cover, uh, you know, the structure of the economy, how is that change, whether there is more, you know, uh, enterprises, businesses engaging in, you know, in manufacturing sector, tertiary sector. It would actually tell us uh, the, the different uh, businesses that are, uh, that are in operation in Bhutan, for example, whether, what is the share of the number of hotels that are in operation, what, what are the number of you know, construction businesses in Bhutan, what is the scale of retail business in Bhutan, uh, what kind of manufacturing industries are there. Currently, Bhutan's gross domestic product is compiled and calculated annually based on administrative data. So the census report will help validate the administrative data and analyze the structure of the economy. The final report of the census will be published in May next year. National Statistics Bureau will conduct the census with financial and technical support from World Bank. Sunam Pem for BBS News. Investment of 30. Yeah. The Office of the Attorney General is reviewing a case of irrational investment of 30 million ngatum made by the Royal Insurance Corporation of Bhutan. The company management had made the alleged investment at Sherab Reli Higher Secondary School in Mongar in 2016. The Anti-Corruption Commission forwarded the case involving seven current and former company officials. According to the Commission's report, RICB had invested 30 million ngutam in Sherab Reldi Higher Secondary School and helped the school's proprietor to liquidate his loan with Bhutan National Bank. As per the probable charges submitted to the OAG, the former executive director of RICB is charged for commission amounting to abuse of functions under the Anti-Corruption Act of Bhutan. The report states that the former ED had knowingly and purposely approved the decision to make an investment with the intent to help the school proprietor save his business. The investigation report also says as the investment was made without forming an investment committee, his action breaches the investment guidelines for insurance business 2015. Likewise, the Commission also charged six other officials, including the former Chief Executive Officer and a former Deputy Manager for omission amounting to abuse of functions under the Anti-Corruption Act of Bhutan. The investigation report states that they had approved the investment decision with the same intent despite knowing the investment was not in the interest of RICB. As per the investigation report, the school proprietor had proposed for the investment in July 2016 after BNB had warned him for failing to repay his loan and that his land in Gallifu would be seized. According to the investment guidelines, an investment cannot be sanctioned by the Credit Management Committee. It should be approved only by the investment committee, which should include at least one board member and also requires an investment policy. This is Chang Adoji for BBS News. Works towards Fensiling Township Development Project, the biggest urban development project in the country, began. The Salang tender for the project was then at the Amucha site. Salang tender for the first package of Zone A of the project was conducted yesterday. The construction of the project will take place zone-wise and is divided into five zones. More than 60 million US dollars will be spent in Zone A, which will be built in more than 160 acres of land. River training works, landscaping, embankment works and bank filling will be carried out under Package 1. Zone A has three packages, with the second package expected to start after five years. Every year, uh, we have floods, so it will protect the town from the flood. And uh, secondly, uh, 
with the kind of topography that we have, uh, the town has actually reached its limits to expand its boundary, municipal boundary. So uh, that is another aspect uh, uh, that will benefit the town in terms of expansion. And thirdly, with the kind of uh, uh, development plans that are there in this project, what we see businesses would come, employment would come, and also we are hoping that uh, uh, issues such as housing might also be uh, resolved. Construction Development Corporation Limited is the implementing agency for the project. Asian Development Bank and the Bhutanese government are funding the project at a 70 to 30 ratio. The entire township project covers over 1,100 acres of land. The project is expected to finish by 2036. For Sunam Penjur in Fensling, Sunam Pem for BBS News. Orange is considered one of the main cash crops other than cardamom in Bhutan. And Dagana is known for exporting tons of oranges every year. But in the past few years, farmers of Karmalingyog are not so happy because their orange trees are dying. Thousands of orange trees are dying since 2014. In the past, farmers used to earn about 300,000 newtum every year by selling oranges. But now it has become a thing of past. Earlier we used to fetch good money by selling oranges. Now we are facing difficulty since we do not have other business here. But today, people here have started cultivating cardamom, vegetables and work in construction sites. The orange trees are now covered with weeds. The trees are cut down for firewood. Erika nut trees also does not grow well here. The Georg Agriculture Extensions official is not sure what is causing the trees to die. But it is not the end of orange business in Karmalin Georg. I have now planned to supply orange saplings in the 12th five year plan. Last year, I distributed 3,000 saplings on a pilot basis and it's growing well. But people here suspect climate change as the cause since they noticed that orange trees are now growing well in high altitude regions. For Sonam Lamo in Dagana, this is Chang Adoji for BBS News. Rearing yak was once a practice synonymous to ha, but not anymore. Today, the farming practice, passed down from one generation to another, is on the verge of disappearance, leaving the elderly population of the district concerned. Some three decades ago, Isu Georg had almost 50 households who owned yaks. Today, there are only six of them. 64-year-old Tsutim Doji is among the remaining yak herders. Now, in later part of his normal life, he has been thinking of handing down the farming practice to his children. But his young children do not want to spend the rest of their lives herding yaks. Although I am not left with my strength, I rear yaks. There is no interested labor to look after them. It would be a pity to sell them. Rearing yak is beneficial. We depend on them for our livelihood. Sujim's son-in-law, who lives in the village, has come to the pasture land to reach his monthly ration. He says rearing yak requires a lot of hard labor, including a harsh life in the highlands. I am interested in rearing yaks, but it comes with many challenges. We will not be able to follow our parents' footsteps. The pasture lands are really far away. Moreover, we have to know how to make butter and hard cheese, which is not possible without practice. The scenario is similar in most other highland communities of Ha. 
For now, the elderly yak herders like Tutim can only hope the government will intervene with necessary measures. If not, they already foresee the age-old farming tradition becoming extinct after they are gone. Samdhan Dolker, BBS News. Globally, just over 5% of women are commercial pilots. Bhutan has only two female pilots and the country's first female pilot now becomes the first female captain after her recent promotion. From getting recruited in 2006 as the first female pilot to now becoming the first female captain, Ugandema is breaking the gender barrier in the aviation field. Adding yet another stripe on her shoulder, Druk Ayer's 33-year-old Ugandema becomes the first female captain in Bhutan. After completing her initial training from New Zealand, she worked through the ranks first as a trainee pilot, then senior first officer, and now a captain. Initially, when I started off, um, there weren't many in Bhutan. There, were, there wasn't any female pilot, and it wasn't. We I didn't really think it was an option. Later on, as I finished completed my high school, and I asked my parents about it, and they were very supportive. So that's how it came about and for, for me personally, I wanted to become a female pilot. That was the first step and once I became a first officer, my next goal was obviously to become a captain. Ugin attributes her achievement to the inspirations that she draws from her mother. Ugin, who decided to become a pilot only after completing high school, believes that by working hard and being determined, one can be successful despite the gender. We are very lucky to be born in Bhutan and we have equal opportunity as men and we, have, we are very fortunate to have very visionary leaders who have made sure that we are insured and we have equal opportunity as men do. But to take the opportunity for yourself and I think it's all to do with personal, facing your personal problem and challenges and setting your own personal goals. A captain who is nominated pilot of a plane is in overall charge of the aircraft while the first officer is second in command. The other female pilot, Sonam Hamu, also works for Drukye as a senior first officer. The company has 19 captains and 16 first officers, of whom seven are Bhutanese and only two are women. For Sangachesam in Paro, Samtan Dolkar, BBS News. Transport United FC claimed the title of the BOB National League for the second consecutive year. In the final game of the championship, they defeated their rival in the title race, Ugan Academy FC. Transport United started strong, taking the lead in the first half by two goals to one. However, in the following half, Ugin Academy FC made a comeback maintaining a comfortable lead. They were close to winning the championship had it not been for the two goals conceded in the last 10 minutes of the game. The game ended 4-3 in favour of Transport United. With the dramatic win, Transport United FC became the first club to win the BOB National League title twice in a row. They were awarded a cash prize of 1 million item along with the trophy and individual medals. Meanwhile, debutant Paro FC had to settle with the first runners-up position. They were denied the championship title by Thimpu City FC as they lost by two goals to one. Paro FC would have won the championship had they managed even a draw against Thimpu City FC. Six teams from Paro, Fonseling, Punaka and Thimpu took part in the league this time. This is Ring Dentu for BBS News. Well, that's all we have for you this week. Thank you for watching.